الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد We have been going through the text of Hafid Ibn Rajab Al-Hambali Rahmatullahi Alayhi This book called Fadlu Ilm Salafi Ala Ilm Al-Khalaf which is the virtue of the knowledge of Salaf over the Khalaf. So Salaf are the people in the first three generations or earlier period and Khalaf are the people who came afterwards. So in a way, this is the excellence of knowledge. The more you had, the better you would be with regards to your practice, inshallah ta'ala. And then thereby you could come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. So Imam Sahib now is talking about delving into the minutiae of permissible sciences. So you remember there's beneficial sciences and there's harmful sciences. And from the harmful sciences, we are now going in to those which, although in principle are permissible, but if we delve too much into it, going to the nitty gritty of it, then it might not be the beneficial one that we are instructed by Rasulullah to ask for. So for example, about genealogy and astronomy, we already mentioned as Imam Sab proposed and also supported it with his um, argument and hadith. Here, Imam Sab is now saying, وَأَمَّا مَا أُحْدِثَ بَعْلَ الصَّحَابَةِ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ الَّتِي تَوَسَّعَ فِيهَا أَهْلُهَا وَسَمُّوهَا عُلُومًا وَظَنُّوا أَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَالِمًا بِهَا فَهُوَ جَاهِلْ أَوْ ضَالْ فَكُلُّهَا بِدْعَ So as for those sciences that were invented أُحْدِثَ after the time of companion sahaba whose proponents we say ahluha those who get involved with those sciences the proponents of such sciences and they call them ulum sciences they claim that this is the true knowledge they've delved into it they expanded it and they claimed and they believed that those who do not know about these sciences, they are either jahil or misguided. They are ignorant or misguided. So all of them are innovations. So this is all innovation. Those who are saying it is saying the wrong thing. This is not the way. This is not what we are supposed to do. So all of them are innovations and are to be counted among the newly invented affairs. We're here. Min muhdathati umur al anha. These are the newly invented ideas which we have been prohibited against. And from this is ma ahdathatu al mu'tazila. Mu'tazilatu. Mu'tazila, there was a group of deviant Muslims who are called Mu'tazila based on their understanding. Inshallah, in Ilm al-Kalam, you would go through that in, in Aqeedah book later on once you've done this basic stuff, Inshallah ta'ala. But anyway, so the Mu'tazila, they innovated the discussion min kalamin من الكلام في في القدر about the تقدير about the destination about قدر predestination وضرب الأمثال لله and they're setting up examples analogies and similes for Allah سبحانه وتعالى وقد ورد النهي عن الخوض في القدر and it is clear that it is prohibited to delve into قدر into predestination 
وفي الصحيحي ابن حبان والحاكم عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما مرفوعا that in the two sahih collection two sound collection of imam ibn hibban and imam hakim like two sahih collection of imam, sorry two sahih collection of ibn hibban and hakim they both recorded what from abdullah ibn abbas and ibn abbas mean abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma marfu'an which goes all the way back to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يزال أمر هذه الأمة موافيا ومقاربا ما لم يتكلموا في الولدان والقدر that this nation would continue to be on the steadfast path straight path would stay steadfast and balanced so long as they do not discuss about the children and the divine decree about the children means those children who die young what would be their outcome what would happen to them would they go to jannah or would they go to hellfire the children of even non-believers what about them compared to muslim children the Muslim family children. So as long as we refrain from discussing those minutiae and detailed stuff and about destination and predestination, then we will stay on the path. I mean, these are not to be discussed about. These are not the matters that we can fathom without having sound, deep understanding of Sharia. And it's not required anyway. This is something that we have to trust, inshallah, that I leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقد روي موقوفا ورجح بعض وفقه. And it has been reported موقوفا. موقوفا means it is narrated and it stopped as Sahabi, as a statement of Sahabi. And he didn't do it مرفوعا means he did not say that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated it. Rather, it stopped at Sahabi. So the statement of Ibn Abbas. And some declare to be the stronger. Anyway, وخرج or خرج both ways fine. خرج البيهقي من حديث ابن مسعود مرفوعا. Imam Bayhaqi, rahmatullah alayhi, brought a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu مرفوعا. Which goes all the way back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. إذا ذكر أصحابي فأمسكوا وإذا ذكر النجوم فأمسكوا. When my companions are being discussed, when people talk about the companions in a negative way, then refrain from it. And when stars are mentioned, means when they talk, they're talking about the zodiac signs or these like you know astrology stuff about the stars and whatnot then one should try one should stay away from refrain from being there stay away from them this narration has been mentioned from several different variations, from several different reports, all the different routes, yet they all have some weaknesses in them. So the hadith are generally weak, but as you could see, Imam Tabarani in his Mu'jam al-Kabir, Abu Naim in Hilyatul Awliya, they say it's a gharib, strange. Qultu, Hafiz ibn Rajab sahab, which is it's, it's weak, not just gharib. Ibn Abdul Malik. Layinul Hadith. He's a little bit easy, a little bit softer, a little bit lack and slack about hadith as appear in the book Taqareeb. Lakin lahu shahidun min mursal. Mursal ta'awus. Akhrajahu Abdul Razak as-Sana'ani fi amalih. 
وإسناده صحيح فيتقوى به الحديث إن شاء الله But there is a supportive or corroborative evidence which is a shahid supportive, supporting evidence from a mursal a hadith which Tawus narrated without mentioning the name of Sahabi it's called Hadith al-Mursal with Abdul Razak ibn San'ani in his Musannaf Abdul Razak he brought it there in his Amali in his you know, dictated book could be Musannaf or could be Amali maybe if in Amali it says so that's fine and its chain is Sahih so this hadith gets strengthened. So it becomes strong, inshallah. So hadith is fine from that respect. So the hadith, despite it being weak, is supported by other corroborative evidence and thereby supporting it and strengthening it that we can take benefit from it. So remember that, especially in the modern time, it is quite a big interest of people talking against Sahaba and the reason for that, whether they know it or not, some know, some don't. Even some innocent people without realizing what they're doing, they delve into it. The idea is that disconnect people from the orthodoxy, from the mainstream Islam. And that comes with Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah And there are two main you know, chains, main connectors, if you break those two links, all the chain would be broken. The first being the ulama, the alay men, common men could access the chain. So they have got a lot of issues with the ulama, whereby even practicing Muslim would not find comfortable or would not find comfort or satisfaction or even you know trust in ulama. They would not be happy being with the ulama some of them actually go out of their way and start criticizing and going against them they would rather not have ulama around them there's some who never met any alim they just hate them by and large and that's very bad that's what that was your first link to the chain of rasulullah all the way down here so they're the heirs of prophets so that's first thing and there may be wrong reason and right reason but i'm not talking about that but i'm saying that practically we have abandoned our most important links to Rasulullah's knowledge. And then the final one in between all the ulama and the final one is Sahaba. So if you could get rid of Na'udhu Billah Sahaba, then everything would just crumble down. The whole building would be collapsing without any trouble at all. So you do not need to do anything. Let them just do this. And this is what they're working on. Some knowingly, as I said, and some even practicing Muslims without realization, they just delve into it and cause more trouble for themselves and for the next generation. I mean, let's save a school from this. And then, وَرُوِيَ عَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنُمَا أَنَّهُ قَالَ لِمَيْمُونِ مَيْمُونِ إِبْنِ أَمْهَرَانِ And this is narrated from Ibn Abbas رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنُمَا that he said to Maimun, his student, Maimun ibn Mahran, Be aware of researching into the stars for they effectuate fortune telling. They make you delve into fortune telling. They literally attract you, they call you, in the tada'u, it calls you, ilal kahana, towards fortune telling. Wa iyaka wal qadr, fa indaw yad'u ila zandaqa. And be aware of, talking about predestination. Because this discussion would invite you towards zandaqa, heresy. وَإِيَّاكَ وَشَتْمَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ And be aware of abusing and swearing at any of the, any one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم فَيَكُبُّكَ اللَّهُ فَيَكُبُّكَ اللَّهُ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وَجْهِكَ Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will throw you face first in the fire, on your face, straight down. Abu Nu'aim, Anas Bahani, in his book, al hilya perhaps, wrote this hadith, but he did not say that the hadith is sahih. So anyway, it might be weak, but at least it has got some substance to it with regards to understanding. So we need to be very careful about our knowledge, where we are getting from, who we are getting it from, and what subjects. It's not about what you feel like doing, other what would be beneficial? Okay, let's go on to Tafsir 